Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about IEEE 754 single precision floating point representation format in computer architecture course, computer organization course and computer organization and architecture course. First of all, we have to know how a floating point number can be represented what is the standard format we have to use for representing floating point number what are the two IEEE 754 standard formats for representing floating point numbers these are the points that we are discussed in this video as we know Floating point numbers can be used in real life applications such as retail applications uh, in visitor, visitable market, grocery shop. In that uh, retail applications, floating point numbers are used already we have seen. In scientific applications also floating point numbers can be used. In measure learning applications and artificial intelligence applications and robotics applications, floating point numbers can play a major role. How a floating point number can be represented in a computer? That can be called as floating point representation. The way of representing a floating point number internally in a given computer can be called as floating point representation. The standard format we have to use for representing floating point numbers is m into r power e where m corresponds to the mantissa Mantissa is nothing but it is a signed integer number or a fraction number. Next one, E capital E corresponds to the exponent. It refers to the relative position of the decibel point. And capital R represents the radix or a base. If the radix value is equal to 2 then it can be called as binary floating point number if the radix value r is equal to 10 then it can be called as decibel floating point number here two types of floating point numbers first one is binary floating point number second one is decibel floating point number in the case of binary floating point number capital r value is equal to 2 in the case of decimal floating point number capital r value is equal to 10 so this is the standard format for representing floating point numbers i triple e is one standard organization it proposed a one standard called 754 by using that standard we are representing floating point numbers in two ways the first one is single precision format it contains 32 bits second one is double precision format it contains 64 bit Okay, IEEE 754 single precision format contains 32 bits. IEEE 754 double precision format contains 64 bits. So these are the two standard formats for representing floating point numbers in IEEE 754 standard. Now <coughs> we can go for single precision format so the single precision format contains 32 bits 
starting with 0 and ending with 31, total 32 bits. These, these 32 bits can be divided into 3 fields. The first field can be called as Mantisa. It contains 23 bits. That is 0 to 22. Total 23 bits can be allocated for Mantisa. Next field can be called as Exponent. So 23 to 30 bits. That is total 8 bits can be allocated for Exponent. And last one bit 30 to 31 that bit can be allocated for sign bit. If sign bit value yes is equal to 0, it represents a positive floating point number. If s value is equal to 1, it represents a negative floating point number. Okay, here we are representing floating point number in positive way or in negative way. How they can be differentiated. If the sign bit value s value is equal to 0, it represents a positive floating point number. If the sign bit value s is equal to 1, it represents a negative floating point number. Here, the mantissa is a either a integer number or a, a fraction number. Here, the exponent value is either a positive number or maybe a negative number. Based on the movement of the decimal point either to the left or to the right, we may get either a positive exponent value or a negative exponent value that have seen in the example problem. For that exponent, we have to add some bias value. What is the bias value in single question format? For finding out the bias value in single question format, the formula is 2 power n minus 1 minus 1, where n is number of bits allocated for exponent. Here, how many number of bits allocated for exponent? That is, uh, 8 bits are allocated for exponent. So that 8 can be substituted in the place of n. 2 power 8 minus 1 minus 1. That is equal to 128 minus 1. Then we are getting 127. In the case of single precision format, the bias value is 127. Now we can go for one example problem on single question format. Now in this video we have to discuss about example problem on IEEE 754 single position floating point representation format. The given problem is consider a 32 bit register which stores floating point numbers in IEEE 754 single precision format, find the decibel value of the following 32 bits. So these are the given 32 bits. In the given problem, they are using single precision format. We already know that Single precision format contains 32 bits. That 32 bits can be divided into three fields. The first field can be called as sign bit. If the sign bit value yes is equal to 0, it represents a positive floating point number. If s value is equal to 1, it represents a negative floating point number. Next one, E is nothing but exponent. 
8 bits are allocated to exponent whereas 1 bit is allocated for sign bit. Next field can be called as mantissa. Here 23 bits can be allocated for mantissa. 0 to 22 total 23 bits can be allocated for mantissa. 23 to 30 8 bits can be allocated for exponent. 30 to 31 1 bit can be allocated for sign bit. Now this 32 bit single question format can be compared with the given 32 bit format in the given problem. Now when we are comparing the first field is yes, s is compared with the, this field. So s value is equal to 0. Whenever s value is equal to 0, we can say that the given floating point number is a positive floating point number. Because so s value is equal to 0, we can say that it is a positive floating point number. We already know the first field s. s value is equal to 0. We can say that it is a positive floating point number. Next, the second field is exponent. Here, whatever the exponent value given in the problem, that exponent can be treated as biased exponent because whatever the true exponent we have true exponent is there for that true exponent we are adding the bias value hence we are getting the biased exponent value in the given problem biased exponent is equal to 1 5 zeros 1. How to get the true exponent value from the biased exponent value? The formula is true exponent is equal to biased exponent minus bias value. What is the biased exponent value? So, biased exponent value is there in the binary form. That binary form can be converted into decimal equivalent. So, 1, 5, zeros, 1, 1. Here, we have to assign the positive positional weights. So, from right to left. Here, this is 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4, 2 power 5, 2 power 6, 2 power 7. So, 1 into 2 power 7, 0 into 2 power 6, that value is 0. 0 into 2 power 5, that value becomes 0. 0 into 2 power 4, that value becomes 0. 0 into 2 power 3 that value becomes 0. 0 into 2 power 2, that value becomes 0. 1 into 2 power 1, 1 into 2 power 1, plus 1 into 2 power 0, 1 into 2 power 0. So, that is equal to 1 into 2 power 7, that is 128, plus 1 into 2 power 1, 2, plus 2, 1 into 2 power 0, 1. So, that is equal to 
So this is the biased exponent value. Okay. Next, what is the bias value in uh, single Prussian format? In the case of single Prussian format, the bias value is nothing but 2 power n minus 1 minus 1, where n is nothing but number of bits that are allocated for exponent. For exponent, we are allocating 8 bits so that we have to substitute 8 value. So 2 power 8 minus 1 minus 1 that is equal to so 128 minus 1 that is 127. This is the bias value. Once we are knowing the bias the exponent value is equal to 131 and the bias value is 127 then we have to find out the true exponent value. So true exponent is equal to bias the exponent value is 131 minus bias value is 127. So then true exponent value is equal to 4. Okay. Next, we already know the exponent value. We already know the sign bit value. Now we can go for third field. The third field can be called as Mantissa. Mantissa always represents a fraction value so that Mantissa m is equal to fraction value is nothing but after decimal point whatever the value is that that value becomes the exponent. So this value can be compared with uh, uh, here. So what is the value? So 1, 1, 0, 0 something. Okay. This is the mantissa value. So we know the sign bit value. We know the true exponent value. We know the mantissa value. Now here we have to follow two normalizations in the given problem. First one is explicit normalization. This formula is minus 1 power s into 0 0.m into 2 power e minus by s. Whereas implicit normalization formula is minus 1 whole power s into 1.m into 2 power e minus by s. When we are comparing these two formulas in the case of explicit normalization here 0 0.m is there whereas in the case of implicit normalization here 1.m is there that is the only difference then in the given problem they are not mentioning which normalization we have to use at that time we have to use the default normalization the default normalization is implicit normalization so that we are using this formula. Here in this formula minus 1 whole power s here s is nothing but sign bit value 1 point m m is nothing but mantissa into 2 power e minus bias e minus bias is nothing but true exponent value. Now we have to substitute the <coughs> values. So we have to find out the decimal equivalent. For that purpose, we have to use implicit normalization formula. Minus 1 whole power s into 1 point m into 2 power e minus bias value okay so here 1 minus 1 whole power s value what is s value here 0 into 1 point what is m value m value is nothing but 0 0.11 already point is there so that we have to mention only 1 1 here 
I am not writing the zeros. Okay, into two power e minus bias value is nothing but e value is nothing but bias the exponent value that is one thirty one. Here bias value is one twenty seven. So here one thirty one minus one twenty seven. Whatever the value we are getting, that value becomes true exponent. So that is equal to minus one whole power zero is nothing but one into one point one one into two power four. Here two power four is a sixteen. We are not multiplying with the sixteen uh, uh, into one point one one. That is wrong. Here. 2 power 4 is nothing but we are moving the decimal point towards right so that means 1.11 into 2 power 4 we are moving the decimal point four times towards right so what is the value we are getting so decimal point moving one time we are getting 11.1 Decimal point moving another time we are getting one triple one decimal point moving one more time so we are getting one 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 zero next decimal point moving another time so then we are getting triple one zero zero so decimal point moving first time second time third time fourth time. So moving the decimal point towards right four times. So then we are getting so triple one zero zero. Now we have to find out the decimal equivalent value for this given binary number. So apply the positional weights starting from right to left. Starting positional weight is two power zero, two power one. 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4. So that is 1 into 2 power 4 plus 1 into 2 power 3 plus 1 into 2 power 2 plus 0 into 2 power 1. 0 plus 0 into 2 power 0. That is 0. So that is equal to 16 plus 8 plus 4. That is equal to 28. So 28 base 10. So, what is the decimal equivalent value? The answer is twenty-eight base ten. In this way, we have to solve the given problem. So, I hope all of you understanding this video. If you are really understanding this video, please click on the like button. and share this video to your friends and classmates if you have any doubts please put your doubts in the comment section i will try to clarify your doubts if you really like this video please subscribe my youtube channel divyana srinivas rao thank you Thank you, one and all, for watching this video. In the next video, we can go for another example problem.